Hello, everyone. Thank you all for, for tuning in. Uh, on this Radcast, I, Jamin Shively in Seattle, Washington, uh, ha happy to be joined by Adam in Olympia, Washington, Jason in Long Beach, California, and Michael in the south of France. Gentlemen, how y'all doing today? And what's what's good with you? Going on mute. Well, good to be here. Thanks. Great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. I'm Adam Soul, by the way. I'm in Olympia, Washington. All righty. Welcome, gentlemen, and welcome to everyone uh, who uh, will watch this video. So um, I wanted to kick off with um, kind of some perspectives I have on the very topic of perspectives themselves, perspectives on our predicament. OK, so I'm going to screen share. Now, while I'm screen sharing, I can't see you. So raising your hand won't help. Just just jump in. OK, and then I'll pop out a screen share or we can have a one on one while I'm screen sharing, however you want to do it. So, so don't hesitate to jump in, gentlemen, OK, at any time. Um, so here's what I want to show is um, these uh, different sort of perspectives that people can have. One perspective is that there's no problem at all, right? And I would say that about half of humanity, this is about one half of the total thickness of this square, uh, about half of humanity falls into that category. This isn't like a big, you know, what's the problem, <laughs> right? These are folks who are just focused on, you know, their daily lives and their hoarding and whatever else they're doing in the world. Okay. Damon, when, yes, you, when you say half of humanity, yeah, don't you really mean half of the first world? No, I mean about half of humanity, not just half of the first world, but half of humanity. Approximate. It's a ballpark number. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not trying to nail it or anything. Right. The second, the third world countries. Yeah. Do you think they they know there's a problem than more than us? Or do you think uh, uh, it, it depends on the country? Like for example, uh, the the woman who is my mom's main caregiver is uh, from uh, Tanzania. Uh, Africa. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but anyway, Tanzania or Tanzania in Eastern Africa. And uh, they know that there are major problems. It's, uh, it's heating up, they're having crop issues, droughts, flooding in some areas. So it, I, I would say there, that a lot of people know that there's a problem and a lot of people don't. That, that's my whole point here, right? I'm not trying to... Okay. I, uh, yeah, I, I really don't want to go into that too much more. Um, but, you know, about a uh, ballpark half of humanity says that there's basically no problem. Um, another, um, I don't know, uh, n you know, 48 percent falls into the category that I would s call small problem. Right. You know, and when I say small problem, I mean the kind of thing that can be fixed with solar panels and carbon taxes and permaculture and a bunch of, you know, really good things like that. Right. But the, the, the very fact that those are the kinds of solutions that they're advocating for as adequate solutions um, to me uh, tells me that they think it's a small problem that has a relatively painless solution. Right. And again, that's another whopping, you know, huge chunk, leaving a very small minority. Basically, see the thickness of this bottom slab here. Those are the folks who believe that we're actually in a catastrophic predicament, you know, along the lines of what Professor Guy McPherson describes. You get you guys with me? Um, you know, I'm just saying that's a really small fraction, right? And then of that fraction, um, now let's look at, at red and green. Green basically means go, means, you know, there, you know, uh, means that. It's a positive outlook, meaning that we we can do something to improve this situation. That's really what it means. It's positive in the sense that we have agency, we have power. There's something we can do to improve this. And when I say this, let me just take a little moment to clarify what I mean by improve this, you know, improve. What do we mean by improve? Here's what I mean. 
we may be on a path like like let's say this is the edge of a cliff right here right we may be barreling towards the edge of the cliff with no brakes and our default path is we're just going down to you know just some horrible death right okay um so when i say that we can improve our our trajectory what i'm really saying is we can improve our trajectory what i'm saying is you know even if it's a even if it's a slight improvement and we still go down but instead of you know total annihilation right we're just a little bit banged up right um but you know but we're not totally dead or we're or we're you know you know, I'm, ba I'm basically saying there may be shades of gray. It may well turn out that there are shades of gray as to the path that we can take. And if we have any agency or power at all to, to modify that path, you know, for example, like I've talked about extensively in other videos, we might figure out a way to shut down nuclear even though we're heading into catastrophic uh, abrupt climate change. Um, or we're in the midst of a catastrophic abrupt climate change. We may figure out a way to shut down nuclear. If we can achieve that, that's an improvement. It means that life has a chance to, to bounce back. But if we let it all go Fukushima, um, then we're in serious trouble. Life is in serious trouble. So that's what I mean by green, meaning that we can do something to improve. When I say this, it's really our trajectory is what I'm talking about. Okay? All right. There's something that we can do to improve our trajectory. Uh, even though it may not be a lot, even though we may go extinct, we can still improve the trajectory of Mother Earth into the future. Um, as bleak as it, as bleak as those shades of gray may all be, some are some are better than others. That's the whole point. And uh, now, what's really interesting about this graph that I'm drawing is, you know, whereas the people who think that it's that we have a, a small problem, the vast majority of those think that of course we can do something about it. You know, we just need to you know recycle more and have more solar panels and carbon tax and decarbonize and you know all those good things. Don't get me wrong; those are all good, in fact, necessary, but not sufficient. They think it's sufficient. So the small problem people, right? These these people over here, the small problem people. Most of them are quite optimistic that we can do something to improve our trajectory, of course, and they're very active in that regard. You know, these are these are kind of the kinds of folks who are members of 350.org, etc. Right? They're out there doing stuff. Um, what's interesting? So the vast majority of those are, you know, are greens. Um, the on the other hand, when you get down to the catastrophic predicament, folks, it flip flops. And the vast majority of those are Reds who basically think we're doomed and there's nothing that we can do but prepare for death. There's a lot of people, you know, and, and you can see it by how, you know, how, how many people, po you know, po post negative comments to that effect uh, on our videos where we are part of, uh, what I'm basically saying is that we, the four of us on this call and, and dozens of others of us uh, who, are, who are engaged, in a similar uh, mission uh, to to improve our trajectory, um, we are a very small minority of a very small minority, right? We're a small minority within the catastrophic predicament party. That's my point. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to video so we can have a chat about that. Um, I'm gonna go on mute, love to hear your thoughts on that overall breakdown. And then I've got a lot to say from there, <laughs> but I just wanted to, Hear any feedback y'all may have on that. I mean, if you if you basically agree, just say I basically agree. If you have, you know, comments, uh, questions, whatever, go for it. Go on mute. Thank you. Well, mankind really hasn't tried yet, and and in my opinion, um, there's a lot that we can do that uh, for this and that reason has been has been stopped. And I mean, we, we, the first Earth Day was back in 1970, I believe. And since then, we've been losing the battle to save the planet. And so there's a, and, and what I like about radical collective intelligence is it, it gives us a place to, for all these intelligent minds to come together and develop a plan for to for to the way out 
And we just need to remove the obstacles and be able to apply the plan. But without having a plan, we're lost, in my opinion. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Awesome, Adam. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Go ahead and unmute. Uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate that as well, especially the notion of this, you know, uphill battle for planet Earth. Um, back to your presentation there, Jamin, uh, I, I agree. <laughs> it, it is an interesting breakdown. Um, I'm not how sure, like, how motivating it is one way or the other, but it's an interesting piece of information as far as I'm concerned. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well, keep jumping in, gentlemen. I'm going to go back to screen share because I want to go. I want to ne next talk about where I believe we're going from here. Yeah, in fact, Jamie, I have one more thing to say about that. Oh, please, please, um, please. Uh, I think that to the extent that we can actually gather real data on this, yeah, would make it that much more interesting and powerful, right? To actually be able to put some numbers in here, some percentages to get that data, right, in terms of the relative solvability of the problem, not for motivation's sake, well, that too, um, you know, I think it would be, it would be motivating. Um, but anyway, I think it's very uh, useful. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So next, I want to share about where I think we can go from here. And here's where I think we're headed where everything flip-flops massively, okay? Um, you know, the no problem people will become a tiny minority over time because the extreme weather events are gonna continue to happen, the melting of Arctic ice, et cetera. It's just gonna be so obvious that, you know, you've, gotta, you've really gotta have some serious blinders on. But there will be those who will insist that there is, you know, this isn't, you know, anthropocentric, anthropogenic, sorry, climate change, but, you know, just temporary weather swings, whatever. The small problem people will become the minority because it'll be so obvious that we're in a catastrophic predicament. And I maintain that the, the vast majority of humanity is going to join the bucket line, right? And join the effort to do something about this. Because even though we're seen as kind of a, a, a small, you know, uh, niche of crackpots and visionaries and, you know, hopium addicts, as, as we're called, um, you know, I believe that the, the analogy is, um, is those who were in favor of ending slavery in the United States in the, you know, mid-1800s. At first, they were just this kind of tiny minority that's like, you know, what the hell do you know kind of thing and you know you know this is the way it's always been and this is the way it is and you know whatever but they grew to be the vast majority right and and of, and of course you know we abolished slavery because of that so we're a small minority now but we will grow to be the vast majority simply because i believe these the the red position is just very untenable right to say that there's nothing we can do you know, to alter our course, <laughs> right? You follow me? You know, it's like, I mean, that's just like, give me a break. There's always something we can do, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a pressure cooker, right? People, people, more and more people exponentially, I imagine at some point are going to start saying, you know, we got a problem. Totally, we've got a problem. And of course there's something we can do about it, right? Um, and I think that cult that that our our, our our transforming culture, right? Our culture has to transform because our world is transforming and not for the better. So this transforms our culture. This transforming culture will exert pressure on those who basically don't get with the program. What's the program that there's something we can do, right? It may be too late to save everything. It may even be too late to save the majority of people and of life itself. But there's something we can do. We have agency, right? I want to put billboards everywhere that show like a glass of milk, right? And an Oreo cookie, right? <laughs> and that says, got agency, 
right? Got agency? <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that in the lower left. It looks like it's getting a little bit down. But anyway, you know, we got agency. It's obvious. And so there will be cultural pressure for, for, for people to get on board. And, uh, you know, Radish will be this amazing uh, global community of, you know, I don't know, hundreds of millions of people, if not billions, all pitching in, joining the bucket line, right? Doing something about it. Whatever that something may be, something is something, okay? It's not nothing. So we need to go from here, right, to here. And my next point is, my next points have to do with how we're going to get there, okay? What are my ideas? So one of my ideas is, uh, th this is an idea for insiders. All of us are insiders because we, you know, we get it, um, to be blunt about it. Uh, and for us, this knowledge, for me anyway, I just want to acknowledge that for me, this knowledge of the state of the world and, you know, the catastrophic nature of it, for me, that's been like this attic of despair where it's, you know, it's like this attic that I just don't want to go into, but I go into from time to time. And when I go there, I feel lots of, you know, horrific feelings and thoughts and all that. Um, and then I, and then I leave, I go, I go back down the, the staircase from the attic back to the main part of the house. And then I breathe a sigh of relief, right? Not that not that the attic is gone, but that I've left the attic, and you know, and then I kind of blend back in to normal life, right? Um, let, let me let me go on video just so we can talk about this because th this is really central. Because my 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 central thesis is that until we um, really embrace uh, this reality, rather than have it as kind of like this attic of despair that we go into from time to time when we look at it. And then the rest of the time we, you know, mix in with, with everyone else where we participate in a collective delusion, a collective delusion that life is okay. The world is okay. And everything's okay. Right. And what I'm saying is um, as long as we have it as this kind of well-protected attic, and we don't, you know, live the reality, um, then it's, it's, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think much is going to change, frankly, right? Especially, you know, we're, we're a tiny minority to begin with, and if we're all in the closet, right, we're going to be like, you know, homosexuals in the, in the, you know, early 70s, persecuted, ridiculed, you know, anyway, going on mute. I'd like to say something. Um, <clears throat> I keep thinking about, you know, you talk about the attic of despair. And um, I think about the, you know, the last five minutes, I mean, of life. I mean, right now, um, a lot of people disagree with, with the way I, I see things coming around. But um, I can't stop trying because I, when that last five minutes comes, I'm going to be like, why didn't I try harder? Why didn't I? There could have been something we could have done. And the, and mankind is really intelligent. I mean, we, we, we're able to do a lot of things if we get things out of the way that prevent us. Like um, it, it said that the oil companies or somebody has stopped a lot of inventions that that are capable you know of giving us free energy well if if somehow we were able to remove that blockage or at least we create uh, a website where everybody can come in and just disregard all that and say well if we have if we do this it's like the it's like the the cancer patient and the doctor the doctor says well if you follow the plan the physical you you that you do have a physical way out if you follow the the plan. If you don't follow the plan, you're not going to get out. But if you follow the plan, there's a good chance you can get out. Not guaranteed, but it's much better than if you don't follow the plan. 
and so that's what I see radical collection uh, collective intelligence doing is providing a place for people to come and build uh, this hypothetical plan that we could we could physically do and and I, I go by the adage if it's physically possible it is possible yeah great points Adam and and we of course agree that uh, it is possible for us to come up with a plan that is physically possible uh, that will materially improve our path, our trajectory as 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 Mother Earth and all of her children. Um, so, uh, you know, at a minimum, we can materially improve our trajectory, if not substantially improve it. Right. And, you know, those are the shades of gray. And I don't want to split hairs and talk about, you know, what's possible and what's not possible. I just know that something's possible. And given the state of information and, and communication technologies, which I'll abbreviate as ICT, given the current state of ICT, which is just, you know, off the charts and exponentially growing, you know, across all, you know, aspects, we have the, the potential, as Adam noted earlier, to, uh, refine and uh, participate in and launch a radical collective intelligence that will make all of humanity as a whole operate way more intelligently, think way more intelligently, think way more holistically. And a lot of the thinking is done by computer, uh, by artificial intelligence specifically, and um, uh, including the global holistic model, um, which is a form of artificial intelligence, multiple layers of artificial intelligence, helping connect people together uh, so that we operate, we think and reason and compute and design and invent and connect dots much more as, as a hive, like a beehive, right? Acting intelligently as an intelligent organization or intelligent community, rather than a bunch of individuals operating intelligently, each in our own cubicle, right? Um, and you know, and essentially passing notes under the door <laughs> in the form of email and whatnot. Uh, going from that to a much more dynamic and much more AI-supported, artificial intelligence-supported, um, turbocharged, really. Uh, modality of communication, collaboration, and co-creation. Co-creation of what? Oh, ultimately, of all the solutions that we need. Go on mute. Go ahead, Adam. And I, I see a lot of people, you know, making doc documentaries, writing books, uh, doing studies, and telling us what the problems are. I don't see anybody putting it all together and say, well, these are the problems, and here's the solutions. If uh, if Guy McPherson had uh, was able to look at a at a list of so solutions, I mean he he already says that he's not against inaction. He, he he's for action, and and he says that he uh, he's even said that it, that maybe it's possible, but he doesn't see us working in that direction. Well, radical RCI, radical collective intelligence, is a step in that direction as far as I can see. Exactly, a huge step in that direction. And in fact, um, I when I spoke with, with Guy yesterday, um, I asked him what he thought about radical collective intelligence. And he, th he said he thought it was our best shot at coming up with and implementing solutions. He thought it was our, our very best shot. He really is, is, a, is a huge supporter of it. Um, so, and that actually gets me to my next point. Let me go back to screen share, uh, is that the way, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the key to the way forward um, for bringing, for flipping more outsiders to become insiders, you know, basically to get it. So the focus is on outsiders. And right now, what, you know, what are these outsiders offered? They're offered the Guy McPherson poison pill, right? Basically, which, um, you know, basically says, we're in the midst of abrupt climate change. It's unstoppable. We're all, I, I'm talking about the old Guy McPherson narrative, not the new narrative, which is the old narrative, but with a bit more emphasis, I would say, on, you know, action. Uh, specifically actions uh, 
towards refreezing the Arctic by this summer. Um, but anyway, but the old, you know, the old message, which is, you know, we're all going to die and there's, there's nothing we can do about it. I would, I, I call that the poison pill. And what I say is we transition from that to the sugar coated surprise. What's the sugar coated surprise? Well, the sugar is that we have agency and we're applying radical collective intelligence uh, to all the problems that we're facing. And, you know, let us be, and we're willing to be pleasantly surprised by the outcome, um, which is, you know, a form of optimism. And uh, by analogy, I, I refer to um, the, the mistaken plane trip. So what do I mean by that? You get on an airplane, a 747, it takes off, and you think you're going to Oakland, California, but you're actually headed towards Auckland, New Zealand. And, you know, you've got important meetings in Oakland. There's a lot you need to do there. But the reality is you're now on a plane headed to Auckland, New Zealand. It was a mistake. Um, but, you know, the damage is done. You're on the plane. So now that you're on this, you know, bad trip, uh, you know, what do you do? Do you just fret and stress? and and Or do you just say, you know what? I'm going to be on a plane for the next 17 hours. I may as well enjoy it. <laughs> right? Um, and so that's... Uh, kind of the mindset that I would offer people. It's not that, um, you know, it's not that there's anything good about abrupt climate change and catastrophic six mass extinction. There's nothing good about that at all. Um, but once you embrace that we're on this ride, that we're on this bad trip, this mistaken trip, uh, once you really embrace that, then you can enjoy the sugar, the sugar coating, which is, hey, you know, even though we have to embrace this horrific situation, we get to participate in the most amazing adventure, like sci-fi adventure ever, which is both A, co-creating the radical collective intelligence, the platform and the actual intelligence that emerges on top of the platform. Um, but we also get to apply this amazing, you know, Millennium Falcon to the task of solving our problems to the extent they can be solved. Changing our trajectory to the extent it can be changed, to the extent it's physically possible. And um, and then, anyway, that I just wanted to offer that as, as, you know, another, as what I think is another part of the key. So part of the key is that the insiders get out of the attic of despair and just start living the reality um, and sharing it much more openly, really, you know, sharing that, hey, you know, you should, you should at a minimum, check out the conversation, check out the facts. You don't have to, you know, spend your life on it. Um, but, you know, check it out. And the, a way to help them check it out is to sugarcoat it, <laughs> turn it in from poison pill to sugarcoated surprise, as I just said. And then a third point I want to make here, and this is back to insiders, is, hey, insiders, you know, you're in, in that, you know, you get it, but the majority of you, going back to this image back here, the majority of you are in the red. You're thinking that there's nothing we can do to change this predicament. Okay, so you're you're the folks who I'm talking to now, not the people on this video conference, <laughs> but uh, the people, the, the majority of the insiders. My question to you is, how do you want to go out? And this is this goes with what Adam was was commenting on a few minutes ago. How do you want to go out? So, so you think we're going out? Okay, respect that. Um, how do you want to go out? Do you want to go out saying you know nothing's possible, or do you want to go out saying you know what? I'm going to do the very best I can, along with everyone else who's willing to positively influence the trajectory of Mother Earth, and that may result in actually saving life on Earth if we can successfully shut down the nuclear power plants in time, for example. All right, go on unmute. Love to hear your thoughts, gentlemen. Yeah, well, uh, I suppose I'll say something in turn here. Um, I imagine um, that those who think it's too late and there's nothing we can do um, are in a sizable minority. I think, uh, granted, a lot of those people are followers 
of Guy McPherson, not necessarily the man himself, but sort of his, you know, the, the message as they interpret it. Um, at the same time, I think our bigger problem are those people who don't admit that we have much of a problem at all, or that if there is a problem, it's far from insurmountable, or that it's not something we need to really give too much thought to, right, as individuals. I think that's the vast majority. Um, and as the pressure cooker, you know, heats up or whatever, as the pressure mounts, um, all of a sudden there's going to be a mass awareness, an abrupt conscious, uh, a shift in consciousness. Will it be too late? Right. I think that's kind of more, more of the question. Granted, there, there are people who say, no, there's something we can do. It's too late. Or saying, well, you know, um, you don't know until you try. Uh, sure. Any number of those people m may try. Um, but I think the larger numbers that we need are those coming from the other side. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, uh, Mike. Um, yeah, the, these people that are, you know, with Guy McPherson and say there's no chance left, uh, they're not saying this lightly. lightly. They're, they're the experts and they've been working in this field, these fields for, you know, many, many years and studied it. And these are scientists and teachers and educators that, that know about this stuff. And uh, but, uh, you know, they've been beating their heads against the wall with virtually no results. You know, not, nothing that's really significant for all this time. So it, it's like the, um, the analogy of the, the circus used to when they would train an elephant, they would plant a stake in the ground that the elephant couldn't move and tie the elephant to it. And after the elephant tried to get free a few times, after that, all they had to do was put a little stake in the ground and the elephant wouldn't try to fight it anymore. So that's, that's the mentality I think that these people have. They, 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 they don't see any value in fighting it anymore. And so uh, they, don't, they don't think there's gonna be any success. And so they, they give up. But we don't, we've never had, a, that I know of, a place where where we can build that hypothetical plan, you know, and answer all the questions. There are a lot of answers, and I think when when mankind uh, when reaches as we get closer and closer to this catastrophe, more and more people are going to be asking uh, the question: How do we how do we get out of this? And and th there's no answers out there. There's no place they can go. I mean, uh, you should put in your search engine that uh, this site is, is because the biggest question that's going to be asked is how do we save the world? How do we save our planet? So it, if, if there's a place where people can go in and, and start putting all their ideas and, and also the, the wealthy, the military that, you know, that has um, these secret weapons and the wealthy that have this, this, this secret knowledge, you know, there'll come a point where they're going to want to give it up because they're going to see the, the right, they're going to see the end coming too. And they're going to say, hey, I know something that might be able to help. So there, if there's a place to go to put this stuff, which radish.org is or will be, and I want to ask you what the state of that is, um, then they'll go there and, and suddenly we'll have information and stuff flowing in that that all of a sudden, you know, Guy McPherson might look at it, hey, you know, if we can make this happen, maybe we do have a chance, you know? And, and regardless of if I have to go that last five minutes, you know, I want to be able to say I did everything I could, you know? Okay. Yeah, good stuff, Adam. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'll 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 comment on on the state of radish uh, in a moment. Um, 
but uh, the first thing I'll say about that, actually, right, I'll say right now is that it, it definitely intends to be that place. It is being designed and built to be that place where people can come together and share information and most importantly, co-create solutions uh, or components thereof or strategies thereof um, or, you know, work on the entire solution holistically. Uh, and uh, we've got some good introductory videos on radical collective intelligence that I highly encourage folks to watch. Um, but that is the intent, to come up with solutions to improve our trajectory materially, right, as, as I've discussed. And, you know, and I, and I think therein lies um, much of the problem and the confusion and the cognitive dissonance and the, you know, attic of despair uh, is that, um, you know, people have, you know, who've been working hard for years to try to improve things have experienced nothing but decline on all, you know, relevant metrics or, you know, this ship is going down so fast. It's so clear. And, um, and so that leads to despair and giving up and basically saying, okay, I'm not going to try anymore. Right. And my message to all of those folks who are, you know, at a point of just giving up, um, is it's not over till it's over. And, um, Yes, nature bats last, but radical collective intelligence bats second to last, and we can actually change the game with radical collective intelligence if we act in time. So um, this is part of the sugar-coated surprise that I'm proposing that we market to the majority of people who either don't think that we have a problem or think that it's a small problem, rather than try to sell them the poison pill, the Guy McPherson poison pill. Let's sell them the, you know, the radish.org sugar-coated surprise. And let's participate in co-creating that surprise. And let's make it a good surprise, as, as, as good as we possibly can. Uh, simple as that. Um, so on to uh, Radish and where we're at with that is we're in private beta right now, which means no one can see it. Um, I'm going to pull it up here as soon as I go on mute and uh, listen to y'all feedback. But I, I just wanna show you what it looks like, give you an early glimpse. And then um, what we're in the process of doing, hopefully in the next few days, is actually make it viewable so people can see you know, the inner workings of Radish, uh, and specifically the conversational domain, um, which is the first part that we're rolling out. And then very importantly, I wanna highlight that we are about to open source uh, the development of the rest of Radish um, because we are so out of time and we have such urgency to get the platform in its entirety launched um, so that we can take full advantage of it and really set it off on its own exponential growth uh, trajectory, which, which it's on currently. It's just it's still in the flat portion of the exponential. We need to round the knee of the exponential and get it to take off. Um, so we're going to open source it, and we're going to open source uh, much of our own meetings that we have on the design and development of Radish, actually record and broadcast so everyone can, you know, have a look in and see the, you know, in, into the kitchen and see how we make sausage and invite everyone into the process of making sausage, turn it into a cooking school, <laughs> right? And we'll leverage such platforms as GitHub, github.com, G-I-T hub.com um, to open source develop, uh, you know, the, much of the rest of Radish, <laughs> uh, you know, including artificial intelligence layers, interfaces, global holistic model, you name it. We just don't have time to do this slowly. We've got to do it quickly. And open source is the is is a scalable way to 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 achieve that, and I think that we're really setting ourselves up for success because now that we've crossed Equinox, um, it's you know things are are going to start heating up and we're going to see a lot more extreme weather and people are going to be waking up in droves, particularly as we market to them the sugar coated surprise that hey this isn't you know a done deal that we're definitely headed towards you know all the extinction of all life on earth and there's nothing at all we can do about it no let's do something about it anyway yeah yeah yes sir a, a, a spoonful of medicine right 
helps the sugar go down. I'm just, I'm just teasing. A, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Mary Poppins. I, I know you're less speechless there. What, what exactly do you mean by open source? Oh, by open source, um, it means that instead of one team or one company writing all of the code um, and incorporating all the libraries and everything else that goes into the software development process, instead of it being a closed private process like that, it's completely open, completely exposed so that anyone and everyone can contribute to the code base uh, and or contribute to the strategy of the evolution of radish.org and or contribute to the conversations about the implementation of radish you know they can so everyone can participate in any and every aspect of radish.org we just make it a massive open source project um, so that we can build it out across all uh, relevant dimensions simultaneously and very very quickly and i'm going to i'm going to do my best to pull it up here right now just so i can show you i'm going to go on mute and let you gentlemen talk for a couple of couple few minutes here while i figure this out what do you think mike <laughs> no fair um <laughs> Basically, you just threw me a fastball, <laughs> a curveball. Anyway, um, my feeling about um, the point we're at with the platform um, and human history means that there's at least um, not only a dire need. Uh, but a certain awareness um, for the need for a platform such as Radish, right? It's not that it's the only platform out there, but it's something of a meta platform that integrates itself with other networks uh, that are out there. Um, because instead of being a very closed source, you know, kind of social networky platform such as uh, Facebook, um, here we're talking about something that's not only open source, but that's a very decision making, right? Um, the meetings are largely recorded and 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 made visible. So it's a whole new paradigm uh, within which we're uh, we're working on the platform itself. And so it's exciting for those who are interested in the platform itself to be able to not only join the conversation, but code, not only code, but join the conversation, right, on how to make it a better platform. Uh, that's super exciting. Uh, so anyway, it looks like you're back, Jamin. Um, but uh, I, 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 I don't think this could have come any uh, later. <laughs> yeah. No, good stuff, you guys. Um, so here, let me just show folks what's uh, what I've got. I'll do a quick screen share of kind of where we're at with Radish right now. And this is currently password protected, but we're about to open it up. So um, what we have here, uh, so here, yeah, let me, let me just X out of a couple of these. All right, so here we have a view of all the conversations in series. We have a single conversation, which looks like a single card and a series of conversations, which, you know, looks like a stack of cards. And so if we click on the series, view the series, we spread the cards out on the table and you see this the series of conversations one at a time with appropriate details. And you know, you can play the video right here on the screen. For example, um, let's see. It's muted, but anyway, um, you get the you get the picture. Uh, and um, you know, then you can enter the conversation and comment on it. Um, and, uh, you know, since I'm the manager or owner of this conversation, I can actually edit it. And so what I might do is identify here, let me X out of this. 
And um, let's say I wanted to add a parent to this conversation. And as a parent, there's a conversation I had with Sean Kelly. So I click on that series and I select this conversation from that series and I say add parent. And then um, what that does is if we go back to here and refresh this page and look at the series, we'll now see that uh, this first one in the series has a parent. And we can go to that uh, to that conversation um, and go to that parent conversation. Uh, anyway, it's just that's one of the cool features that we have that links conversations to each other. You can identify which conversation grew out of another conversation, for example. Anyway, we're about to uh, expose all this, but the the you know let me just kind of. Uh, do a sketch to um, show why this is so important. So you can imagine a conversation, a series of conversations as being like a skyscraper, right? You've got the ground floor, you know, the, the first the first floor, which is the very first conversation in that series built off of whatever foundation it's built off of. And we'll talk about foundations extensively later. But then the second conversation in the series is like the second floor the third floor, the fourth floor, the fifth floor, the sixth conversation, the seventh conversation, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. And you have this growing, uh, you know, you could think of it as a tower of knowledge, right? Um, where you're bringing in um, ideally, and we'll talk about how we get to this ideal, or I talk about this in on the introductory videos of, of Radical Collective Intelligence. But ideally, uh, we have the most relevant experts in this uh, domain, in this field, or on this topic, right? Whether the topic is the Arctic ice or Greenland specifically, or the plastics in the ocean, or modern agriculture, you name the topic. Um, and there will be myriad topics, which means that there will be myriad towers of conversation. Um, which all point in a in a common direction, which is a common goal of a whole world, which we talk about also in the introductory videos. So they're all pointing in the same direction, and they're all seeking uh, to master um, whatever topic it is that they're contributing to the overall conversation. And for more on that, I'll just do a quick sketch. You know, we've got whole world at the top, and that's that breaks down to a whole taxonomy of needs, which we represent as a bunch of kind of leaf node needs. And then each of those uh, branches into kind of like a whole taxonomy of ways and subways and sub subways to meet those needs. And uh, then from, from the bottom, we've got actually stacks of resources, which I talk about on the very most recent um, introductory video. But we've got all these layers of resources, which ultimately can be combined in unique ways and even in whole taxonomies of combination, um, such that that combination of resources addresses this pathway of way, subway, sub subway to achieve a certain goal. Anyway, it, this is the big picture. I'm not even trying to summarize it. I just want to point to it. And so uh, we talk about this extensively in the introductory videos. But the 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 main i the main point of all this is that each and everything that I'm about to highlight in yellow is a topic. Whole world itself is a topic. Each of its main constituents, pillars is a topic. Each and every need of a whole world is a topic. Each and every way is a topic. Subway is a topic. Solution is a topic. Resources are topics. And so over the course of mastering this, you know, all these, everything here is top, there's nothing but topics. This whole screen is nothing but topics. <laughs> And we seek mastery across each and every one of these topics. And the way that we achieve this mastery is through conversation, not just conversation. I'm going to call it enlightened conversation. Enlightened by who? Enlightened by artificial intelligence. Layer upon layer of artificial intelligence, bringing the right people together, um, facilitating conversations with bots and with um, uh, searches and, and mashups of information. Last time we talked about academic documents uh, being mapped to 
all the taxonomies that we're talking about, as well as a tree of knowledge that we talked about in the in the last video as well, the last introductory video. That's all towards the end of that video. We talk about that. But um, the the application of artificial intelligence and the application of knowledge, such as peer-reviewed academic journal articles, Wikipedia pages, uh, the, the entire patent uh, databases of the world, um, uh, all of these um, sliced, diced, indexed, and mapped to all of these conversations and to all of the topics in the taxonomies that these conversations map to. And then really cool things can start to emerge. Imagine you've got these two conversations going on in parallel and they become aware of each other and they build a bridge to each other. And upon that bridge, they build a conversation where you've got participants from both conversations coming up and essentially doing a mashup, right? And then upon that mashup is the beginning of a whole, whole new series. And so in the end, you end up with this whole Manhattan skyline of these towers of knowledge that are all of which are growing at all times and mashing up with each other and forming new towers. And this is how we penetrate and root down into the depths of each and every topic um, that we see here, notably solutions, 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 solutions. We're gonna be coming up with solutions galore, including political solutions, financial solutions, solutions that uh, change the very culture of humanity, that transform the very story of humanity from a story of hoarding and survival and ego and separation to a whole new story. Anyway, myriad solutions. And uh, I'll, I'll hold it there because I don't want to you know, repeat myself about some of the good material in, in the introductory videos to Radical Collective Intelligence. The most recent are always the best, by the way, on those. But this is just to highlight the power of the conversational domain and why we focused on that first. Uh, but now come all the, next come all the other um, layers of radical collective intelligence beyond the conversational domain. All the taxonomy creation and mapping and interfaces, all of the artificial intelligence layers that transcribe the, the conversations to text, index them, map them, all the mapping of academic documents and the entire patent database and Wikipedia and everything else that needs to be incorporated and mapped so that we have programmatic access to all that information while people are having conversations. And of course, while they're having conversations, they're generating more information, which in turn gets uh, transcribed, indexed, mapped, et cetera. And so it just constantly feeds on itself um, as we constantly explore and develop and co-create all the solutions that we possibly can in the time that we have remaining. So whew, with that, that's kind of the latest, the latest on Radish and where we're going with it and that we're about to open source the whole thing. Um, because we got to do what we can do. And this is one of the things we can do. Go on on mute. Yes, Jamin, going back to your tower analogy, my brain keeps wanting to go to a pyramid and, and talent, uh, analogy where you have like one idea, like refreezing the Arctic. So at the base of the pyramid, you have a whole bunch of ideas, a whole bunch of people come in and start giving their ideas. As those ideas build up, the ideas at the peak at the top is the answer. Well, um, well actually, um, uh, the perspective I take on that is, and let me just pull up an image, um, is that we're using brain swarming. Let me just pull up an image of brain swarming and I'll screen share it. Um, here we go. Okay. So I'm sure that looks familiar to you, Adam, right? And so with the brainstorming methodology, we simultaneously root down from the goal, break it into sub goals or ways, as I call them, ways and subways and sub subways. And then from a bottom up approach, we look at all the different possible resources that could be applied and ways that those resources could be combined in order to fulfill upon this, you know, chain of ways and subways. 
uh, to form the solution. Um, so it's really a collaborative effort, but um, you know, and I, I, it, it kind of does look like a pyramid, actually, because at the very top, you've got the goal or the specific leaf node need as we as we talk about uh, the needs of a whole world. Um, but we root down from the goal through ways and subways and we build up bottoms up from resources. Um, anyway, uh, Adam, what do you think about yeah. what do you think about all that? Is that all? Jab. Well, I'll just, uh, yeah, that is curious that it does have sort of a, a pyramid uh, tendency. <laughs> totally. The, the, the Masons were right. <laughs> but, but, but really, what, 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 what emerges from that is a plurality of solutions. That's, I think, one of the most important things to come out of that. And because we don't want to paint ourselves into a corner and say there's only one solution. So, for example, for refreezing the Arctic, well, we may use a combination of spraying ocean water to create clouds, reflective clouds um, in the, you know, in the, I don't even know at what elevations, but at the appropriate elevations, um, combined with uh, thin film reflective materials for certain portions um, to reflect away the sunlight, combined with uh, ocean walls, ocean barriers, ocean current barriers to block uh, and deflect uh, warm currents that would be that would otherwise melt the ice so um you know damon you, yeah. you just gave you gave me an interesting um image uh about the temporal dimension or domain right we have a very spatial representation in terms of the taxonomy the teleological taxonomy with the telos at the top. So I, yeah, it is like a pyramid, right? Telos at the top and then the, it branches kind of down and out. Uh, but um, it makes me think that, you know, what may be a solution to a problem or set of problems at this time may in the future because of uh, consequences unintended and intended uh, may change as yet further solutions are developed, other problems arise, right? So there's also this temporal, um, you know, dynamic that can, that can also be mapped in, in a very interesting way. And in a very productive way, I think. Yeah, no, no, no definitely. That's a great point. Um, and in fact, um, well, you know, in general, as time passes, we're going to have more and more solutions uh, that will have been, at a minimum, conceived and designed and in many tested. So we're going to have a lot more tools in the toolkit as time goes on and actually exponentially so. Um, and as you consider the um, the positive feedback loops associated with uh, te with myriad technologies, each growing exponentially in parallel, um, the, the, the sum total of all of which constituting what Ray Kurzweil coined as the singularity some years ago, um, we're essentially at that singularity now in terms of technology. So what radical collective intelligence does is kind of like the final layer of intelligence that was needed that can now integrate all these technologies and build upon them and recombine them, you know, as we've seen on the, uh, you know, as the bottoms up uh, part of the brain swarming methodology. Um, what we're at the cusp of, um, and that's why there's such urgency to get this done, get the, get the, get the uh, platform, the, rad the radish platform built out is that we're at the cusp of is, an exponential explosion in solutions and sophistication of solutions and efficiency of solutions and effectiveness of solutions. I think we ain't seen nothing yet. And I think when we look back on, you know, the beginning of 2018 uh, from, from the future, looking back, we're going to look like we were in the stone ages now compared to what we're about to develop. And we're, um, you know, in a sense, we're fighting fire with fire. We're fighting the fire of abrupt climate change with the fire of technology. 
and um, technology always has unintended consequences. And so um, that's why I say we're fighting fire with fire. Uh, it's a very dangerous game. But as far as I'm concerned, it's the only game in town, right? Other than basically just, you know, sitting cross-legged and praying. And I'm not against that. Don't get me wrong. I'm definitely not against that. But I'm just saying, in addition to going inward and going to the spiritual realm, um, uh, including collectively, uh, to the extent that we want to be uh, at all, you know, uh, left brain about this, um, this is the only game in town, figuring out solutions and applying them, period, right? So, um, you know, if half of us pray and the other half work on solutions, whatever, you know, but let's, <laughs> but game on, right? And uh, I, I know where I'm going to be playing most most of most of the time, and that's right here on Radish. Um, and in fact, this conversation <laughs> will will be the beginning of a series. I don't know what we'll call it. We can talk about that. Um, originally, I put Jamin's musings on how this go, will go down, but this is really a conversation. So we'll we'll figure out what 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 to name this series. But um, I think it's really important that we do have these in depth conversations about where we're at and what needs to happen next. You know, we definitely need our numbers to swell and we need people on the court uh, playing the game of radical collective intelligence, the only game in town, the game of saving as much of life on earth as we possibly can. And, um, you know, back to the attic of despair, <laughs> you know, I have my moments of despair, but the only thing that is my, my real antidote to despair is action. And right now, the action that's relevant is the action of coming together, humanity coming together and working together uh, productively. Um, and that's what that's what Radish is all about. That's what these conversations are all about. So please, uh, uh, you know, in the meantime, please feel free to send us messages through uh, uh, Radish.org or you can email me directly, Jamin at. Um, and, uh, you know, let's, let's do this. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, it sounds like, um, the first priority is to get radish.com going. Dot org, dot org. Or dot org. Sorry. Okay. Dot org. Um, and, uh, so what are the problems hindering that? And then what? What do we need to do to get that going? Yeah, yeah. So we have we have a small team uh, developing radish.org right now. Um, Michael and I are on that team. Um, you're absolutely welcome to join, uh, Adam. And in and then, but the very next step that we're that we're doing to accelerate the development of radish.org is we're open sourcing the whole thing, like I talked about earlier on this conversation, and. Um, so that's really our next step is to uh, have some some initial kickoff video conferences precisely uh, to uh, bring everyone up to speed on the state of development of Radish.org at present and where we're going with it immediately, very short term, and the portions that we want to open source. And then we're going to kick off those projects on GitHub and manage a lot of that on GitHub.com which is the largest open source um, software community slash repository slash tool set um, inspired by the Git methodology created by Linus Torvalds. And I don't know who helped him on it. I'm sure he had a lot of help, <laughs> but uh, he's credited with coming up with the Git methodology. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to make extensive use of GitHub, just like we make extensive use of YouTube and Google Hangouts. So we're cobbling together platforms as we need. Uh, to build out Radish because, you know, just like the clunky Millennium Falcon, um, we we need to put this together lickety split because we need to launch lickety split. We're, we're so close to out of time. It's just, it's ridiculous. So we're in, we're in code red. Um, the good news is we have the tools and the good news is we're coming together and the big news is we need to hurry it up. So please spread the word. Look, I, I encourage everyone to spread the word about what we're talking about here. And I don't care 
what you package it in. I don't care if you say these guys are crazy, but you should listen to them for a good laugh. Or you say, you know, boy, I, you know, they may be onto something. I really don't know, but it's worth looking into. I don't care how you package it, but please get the word out. Right. And um, as as you watch, as you watch and contemplate these various video, videos, including the latest introductory video on um, on radical collective intelligence, um, please be just think about participating. Just contemplate what that might be like for you. Right? We're going to have multiple parallel conversations on multiple parallel topics. Um, and uh, so there's so many different ways to participate. You can participate if you're a software engineer and you want to participate in the open source development of Radish, jump in. If you have uh, some, some ideas about how we might refreeze the Arctic and how we might implement that, jump in. If you have ideas about how to transform uh, the conversation and you know wake people up, jump in and participate on that. We need to master so many different topics in order to pull this off uh, that we have to turn it into a, a mass global movement. Um, so, but, and, and to achieve that, we need people uh, in the conversation. We need people watching and learning about this and talking about this. So I uh, really appreciate all the comments that people make on the videos. Please continue to do that and consider participating in conversations and exploring that. Um, we have a, a culture here um, where we adhere strictly to the no asshole rule. We simply don't tolerate assholes and we don't tolerate asshole behavior. Uh, that's a specific technical term, by the way, I'm not trying to be vulgar. And there's a great book called The No Asshole Rule written by a professor at Stanford. It's, a, it's really amazing stuff. Um, but we don't tolerate meanness and we don't put people under any sort of pressure no one is ever put under pressure to answer a question or express an opinion. Right? You know, sometimes people get on and are just on mute and are just listening and hanging out. So it's a very safe environment to wade into, right? Uh, radical collective intelligence and the possibilities of, of changing our trajectory, the trajectory that we're on. So anyway, that's all I have to say. And I actually need to get going fairly soon, but I'm going to go on mute. And if you gentlemen, and in fact, if you gentlemen have more you want to say, I can let you roll. So don't feel like, so, if you have more to say, that's totally fine. We can let it roll. I have to get rolling because I got to see my mom. And uh... well, I'm going to get going as well uh, because of the hour here. Uh, lots more to talk about. So <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll, J Jamie, you tend to make these joinable, not necessarily this one. But, um, you know, if you know where to look, I don't know where that is, Jamin. People can join you know, uh, at any time that we're live. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just tell you right now where to look. So um, when we make these publicly joinable, I post it on my Facebook page, Jamin Chively. I've got to be the only Jamin Chively on Facebook. Um, also on my Google Plus page. And um, also there's a, there's, there's a video here within my YouTube channel called um, Instructions on How to Join a, a Hangout. Um, I also posted in the description and comments there soon we'll be posting them on, on, on the homepage of radish.org, just like we did for the Sierra club dinner. Um, but we haven't got that consistently down yet. Anyway, um, going on mute. Thanks, Michael, for bringing that up. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Michael. I just wanted to clarify where these places are. I just have one question. And is it, is, um, Radical collective intelligence, kind of a database, and then is it? Um, so it sounds like it's a database of conversations. I mean, will you be able to um, send an email with information? Um, so it, it will definitely be a. It, it will include a database of conversations. So, so there will be myriad databases uh, within Radish, um, databases of conversations, um, of the various taxonomies uh, that, that we indicate, um, uh, databases of mappings uh, between conversations, people, topics, uh, other documents, um, 
et cetera, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there will be, of course, interfaces uh, for people to interface with um, and mo modalities of, of, of interfacing. So yes, you'll be able to email Radish. You'll be able to voice dictate to Radish. There'll be myriad ways that you can interact with Radish and with other members of Radish. Does that answer your question, Adam? All right, awesome. All right, if there are any other questions or comments before we uh, before we sign off, and we will be back with more uh, conversations on this series, whatever we end up naming it. Any other questions or comments before we sign off? All right. No. Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Think, yeah, no, just, uh, I just, I'm so happy we're, we're at least at this point, right? In spite of whatever despair we may be experiencing, um, at, at least there's a new hope. I was gonna. I was saving episode four for a new hope, but uh, but thank you for for. Un, un <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe maybe that's a good name for this series, a new hope. All right. Um, anyway, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Adam, and thank you all for watching. And uh, I'm just. I am very very happy as well. Very excited. We do have a new hope. I'll, although <laughs> anyway, Guy McPherson has a big issue with the word hope, um, but uh, anyway, this. I, I like it. Look, and, you're either smoking the the hopium, right, or the nopium. That's take right. Your pick. Oh, take take your pick, hopium or nopium. That's right, hope or nope. Anyway, we're going with hope. <laughs> all right, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you all, and uh, look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Gato gozaimas. Thank you so much.